This is Joanne and I'm in this slightly unusual position because today I want to talk to you a little bit about different formulations of mascara and I've chosen three here to demonstrate uh, two properties uh, we find in chemistry and uh, this would be um, whether a substance is hydrophilic or hydrophobic and then I've got one that seems to bridge the gap somewhere in between. So oftentimes I like to wear uh, non-waterproof mascara, water-soluble mascara just because it comes off very clean. I'm not in the swimming pool that much. Um, I try not to wear makeup to the gym, so I'm not worried about sweat getting in my eyes and worrying about mascara that way. So I often wear, um, right here what I've got is a uh, non-waterproof mascara that should come off cleanly in water and soap. Then I also have here, I've, I've brushed this mascara onto these bristle brushes, real hair. And uh, this one is a waterproof mascara, and that would be what we call hydrophobic. So it's pushing away water, or water does not like it at all. Then we have here a new formulation that's called Beauty Tooth, and I'll get to that in just a minute. So let's take a look at these. So uh, a molecule that's hydrophobic, or a, rather a hydrophilic molecule, tends to have a lot of um, weak hydrogen bonds. And then in the presence of water, um, if, if molecules can make hydrogen bonds between each other, then they can also make it with water, because water has hydrogen bonding, so they can sort of exchange this and then become dissolved in the solution. So water is very attractive, and that's why we've got that hydrophilic name. Um, something that's hydrophobic is uh, often represented um, as a long carbon chain with uh, hy a hydrogen on the side, so CH bonding, and fats, waxes, fall into that definition. So it should be easy. I've had this mascara on these brushes for 12 hours, so hopefully this will all come off nice and cleanly for me. So I, what I have here is my brush, and I have um, some warm water. Let's see if I can soften this up a little bit and have it come off nicely for me. Um, the, the problem I have with uh, water-soluble mascara is it does smear. Let's say you start sneezing or something like that. Actually, I can see the, the molecules, or, you know, bits of mascara coming off here. Um, but, you know, and then even at the end of the day, you clean and clean, and then you're left with smudges on your eyes. I really don't like that very much because it's like paint. This is analogous to latex paint, I guess, that can be cleaned off with water. And this would be analogous to oil-based paint. Um, yeah, look at all that coming off. This is just warm water here. Um, and you can see, actually... This is all completely black. I'm going to use a cotton ball here to see if I can wipe more of that off. Okay, so I won't spend forever cleaning this brush right now. But I don't know if you can see, this is definitely cleaner than the brush next to it. Um, our cotton pad now also has mascara on it. So that was plain water. This was our um, non-water soluble. I mean our water soluble. This one, I'm going to go ahead and stick this in here um, for a little bit and see if we can't get some of this mascara to come off of here. But usually for a waterproof mascara you need to use something like mineral spirits, a solvent that's good for breaking um, these um, more covalent bonds. I'm going to try to brush this onto here, wipe that off. Nothing's coming off. You can see that's clean. The mascara is still on here, so what I'm going to do now is take some of um, this makeup remover. It's got two phases. It's got an oily phase and a more aqueous phase, so supposedly it's supposed to help with um, all different types of makeup you can encounter. So I'm going to put the brush in here and see um, if we can have it come off easily or not. I actually am starting to see little bits coming off now, finally. Yep, it's turning darker. Um, let that go a little bit more. Get a new cotton pad here. Let's see, oh yeah, it's definitely turning darker. It's just taking a while. I used a lot of um, mascara to cover these brushes for demonstration purposes. So here we go. You can see I took off a lot more of the mascara this way here on our hydrophobic molecule. So then this last item here is um, uh, called beauty tubes and it has two parts to it. it the two-part mascaras are actually sort of nice because you 
you can extend your lashes a little bit somewhat invisibly and then you put more uh, colored mascara over the top of it so you give yourself longer lashes without putting too many coats of the dark mascara on there but what I think happens with this particular um, this particular mascara um, is that the the bonds between the individual uh, molecules of the polymer we have things like styrene in here and some other copolymers in here what I think happens is those uh, bonds form very strongly like they would for a waterproof mascara but then the interface between the lash or the hairs here and the mascara is very weak and that's susceptible to warm water coming in and breaking the, the, you know, helping loosen the polymer and have it come right off of here. And it comes off in strings or tubes. Now, I've never been able to get my mascara to come off in tubes. Um, yeah, I just, and I can't, well, I do. Here's a little bit here. I don't know if we can see that at all. Anyway, it comes off as a whole piece. But what I'm going to do is stick this in water and try to loosen this a little. Hope this works for our demonstration here. Um, I really like it because I find I'm left without any residue on my eyes at the end of the evening when I go ahead and do this. Now nothing's coming off here because it's not breaking apart there. What it has to do is come off um, of the hair, at the interface between the hair and the, um, this polymer has to come off. So I'm hoping we can get this to happen here. Warm water's best. Let's see. Well, I hope this works, otherwise I'll feel silly. Hmm. Okay, maybe you can see that. I'm not, we'll keep working on that a little longer, but, okay, let's compare here. This is waterproof mascara, and this comes off like paint. It's sort of smudgy, and if you look at these tubes, it actually comes off as little strings, little tubes. They're just not coming off readily off of this um, particular brush. It does come off my eyes pretty well. I've had really, really good luck with this. Plenty of warm water. Oh, here they go. They're starting to come off. I don't know if you can see them starting to... Can we see that at all in this particular image? I have no idea if you can see this. But what I see are strings coming off. This is actually... Um, the mascara coming off. I didn't set this up to do that. Let's go ahead and try and get a fresh clean pad and take this off. Alright, here we go. We should get better. Oh yeah. Do you see this? Those are actual the strings. Look at the brush now. You can actually see how cleanly it comes off. Whereas with these other ones I kept having residue behind. Um, but when these come off they come off in actual strings or tubes and it just when once you've get, gotten them all off it's just amazing so um, what I'll put on my website are also some tips for how to apply your mascara to make your eyes look the way you want them usually most people want them to look bigger and a little more spaced out uh, spaced apart between the individual eyes so anyway I've been really impressed with this particular formulation and um, was very curious about the chemistry having to do with that. Alright, so thank you for listening. We'll talk to you later.